back to the Too Much Dip Podcast. The Totality Boys. We're here. I'm Dave. I'm going to host. Joining me in studio, Dylan Chivery. Absolute scenes at Parks' Elementary School, man, where I got to watch the eclipse in totality. Yeah, you played a video of uh, the kids' reactions when y'all re- reached the uh, totality out. point. They were all just screeching and freaking out and yelling and hooping and hollering. It's exciting, man. Hooping and a lot of hooping and hollering, which is, I guess, what you would expect from uh, ten year olds. Children's. He's nine, but you know, it's an elementary school. There's a, a, you know, there's a range of ages there. I thought he was seven. No, he, two years ago he. That's was Will's seven. son. Yeah. Confusingly, <laughs> hey, Randy Trembacki's here. Let's go, Boilermakers! I am not looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to the game tonight. They're going to the ship. I'm sure, we'll talk about it later. Maybe not. I don't know. All right. Way to make the most of it. (laughs) KJ's in the building, in his building. His personal home is domicile. I am. Uh, Gentlemen, it's it's great to be with you to confirm uh, life and existence on the other side of the eclipse, as this is the first podcast recorded immediately after the 2024 eclipse. How are we feeling? Um, Iris is intact. World did not end. Rejuvenated. Uh, Dylan, how do you feel? Because you're the only one who went out in the alley and sunbathed his butthole. I'm on my nocturnal shit <laughs> right now. Do you think anybody sunbathed their butt? During the eclipse? Yeah. No. no. You get like... Yeah. It's less sun coverage. Or, or yeah, but like it, it's... More coverage. How does it work? Because it's worse for your eyes, so... No, it's not. It, yeah, well, it wasn't worse for your eyes. I think just more people are looking up at <laughs> the sun. It just allows you to look at the sun yeah. with those glasses. It's not worse for your eyes. I thought the ring of fire can really, really uh, do some damage. It's a burning ring of fire. No. It's not worse for your eyes. It's just you don't typically look at the sun so that's like why, you do during yeah. an eclipse. So that's why they tell everyone that you'll you walk burn your retinas because everyone's looking at the sun. Well, interesting. Randy, crazy. you're presenting this as if it's like a internet bandwidth issue. It's so bad because everybody's using it right now is what I'm gathering from Randy's feedback. And I don't know that I understand that. Pretty much. Interesting. It says here that viewing viewing it with your bare retinas, the UV, ultraviolet light, and infrared radiation slingshots off of the moon. Is is that true? Nope. Made it up. Slingshots. (laughs) You believed it. Dylan's over there typing like, is he serious? (laughs) Is he for reals? I didn't didn't hit a single key, man. This dude's capping. That's what you were thinking. You guys took your shirt. You guys went tarps off. You popped top for those eclipse. Hey, things get wild, man. Well, yeah, dude. What, what the fuck? Only happens maybe twice in a lifetime. Well, I, uh, let me jump in here real quick. As somebody who's not in the path of totality, as you gentlemen were. Mm-hmm. Uh, here in Madison, Wisconsin, the television, I don't know what channel it was on focused on like Kerrville. Like they were on the national feed from Kerrville or whatever. Johnny Manziel. That's like how sh- you know, shitty our coverage was relative to y'all. Was there a scene? Like, did you notice traffic? Were there t-shirts? Was there grift going on beyond just the glasses everywhere? Which, you know. Did not notice expected. any grift. I saw in the parking lot of um, overall Bro- off Brody, the Michaels hobby store, um, where I went Saturday, there was a a little pop up tent selling Eclipse glasses, and that was the only. That's not really a grift. That's just a hustle. Um, there was yeah. nobody manning it. Weirdly, um, and I didn't think sales were going well because I think people were anticipating the cloud cover. But um, from our office, everybody uh, everybody came outside of their businesses, watched it, cheered, and then went back in. It was it was a good time. What? They ch- they cheered as if like. Don't relate you know, this. Astronauts to, are reentering. Yeah, you're 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 about to relate this to like a plane landing or like the end of a movie in a theater. No, this was cool, KJ. Don't yeah. tra- you don't can trash cheer. talk my eclipse. You KJ. can cheer. No, I was this. pretty dope. The, the slander dude. will not will not be tolerated. Here. The ecl- the eclipse I appreciate. I just don't understand like the. Uh, standing up at the end of uh, it's a once in a lifetime. The two event. towers 
and applauding. Okay, it's a once you don't in a make everything a 9 11 joke. The, Rings is. the next one is 300 years away. I was trying to make away. it a Lord of the Rings joke. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you How trying many? to make it. The, the next totality one is like 300 years away. Totality. Do Christopher Walken say Totality. Right. 300 years. Long time. I'll be there. Long time. It had a little more stank on it than normal, didn't it? Yeah, that sounded like it was Travolta. like, a, like a, a DJ, a radio Long DJ time. like intro. Totality. We're all going to be dead. Now he's next doing, time. He's doing Donald <laughs> Trump. We're all going to be dead. <laughs> Let's face it, we're all going to be dead. And if Sleepy Joe's still in the White House, um, it was people were, it was kind of, you know, you could hear people cheering like down at Zilker. It was fun. It was fun. Once it That's was, fair. It got That's very, fair. look, it's cool when it gets very, very dark outside. All the lights in the businesses light up, the street lights go on. That was, that was a cool two minutes. Heck yeah. Which That's is what my wife said. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I could Can throw I it like up on the screen prob- for you. I was going to share the gripe that may be like motivating me to be a little sour about this whole thing. So last week, my kids' school sent out a message like, hey, we're going to do learning around the earth and recycling. And of course, the eclipse is going on next week. If you could collect some paper towel rolls, send them with your kids or other recyclable materials that are clean. And so, you know, like any good parent, you bag up the shit that you got, a few paper towel rolls some cardboard out of a desk I just bought, blah, blah, blah. Send it with the kid. About 1.15, you get the notification. Kai's nap has started. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. <laughs> They're supposed to be uh, creating all sorts of glasses and viewfinders and shit. And then uh, they just put the kids to sleep. And the teachers probably went out and smoked a, smoked a pack and watched the clips themselves like, that was a little. That was a little disheartening. Yeah, they uh, they prepared us for a Rhodes class that would be during nap time, and they weren't even going to like do anything. Which, right right now, I'm like, dang, I really wish he would have been. Uh, he wouldn't. Ap- they wouldn't appreciate it. They're three, right? That's that's silly. But I was. I'm kind of bummed. I don't know. Should we have pulled him out of school? I don't know. The cloud cover too. <laughs> Yeah, I just know. I sent a picture to KJ. I can throw it up on the screen. Gordo uh, grabbed this one, and it's pretty much what we we got to see here in Texas. You might dump out them honkers. Oh, but yeah, this this is pretty much (laughs) what it looked like. If anyone wondered, you have to think somebody did. Someone, yeah, probably someone. Someone probably did dump out the honkers. You know, (laughs) I don't know. Probably happened. I don't know why, but sure. Because it's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, it is. Twice if you're really old. Look at the sunlight just slingshotting across the moon. Oh, what noise does it make when it does that? Shoo-wee! Ow-wee! No, it goes, yeah! <laughs> that's cool. That's cool, Yeah, man. that's pretty much what we got to see through the clouds it and got, all that. It got so dark in Duncanville, DFW, that my dad's, he said, look, zoom in, you can see Venus. You can see a planet. That's cool. How about that, man? That's cool as shit. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Oh. But I guess not cool for everybody. I don't know. Oh, KJ and Klein. I'm shocked to learn. KJ and Klein are poo-pooing it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. You're just, I'm just you're, saying. You're just, uh, you weren't in the cone of interest. The target demo of Big Eclipse may have. Uh... Did you see the tweet? The circles might not have overlapped. Did you see the guy, uh, the conspiracy tweet? It was like. He was some guy went in into the the whatever the totality path and was finding like bad events that have happened like throughout history just oh, in there yes. and it was like hmm and he was serious too. Is Mike it ba- Pence born? Mike Pence, yeah, Mike <laughs> Pence's birthday somehow got lumped in there, which is objectively funny. But it's like, yeah, I'm sure that's this is the only place in the world where bad things have happened. That's crazy. You you couldn't do this with pretty much any place on the planet. Mm. I appreciate it. All right. Mm. All right. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> didn't have much on that, did we? No. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's Masters Week. You want to kick off there? Sure. Today, skip it across the, the water at 16 day. Yeah. That's a, that's a cool thing. That would be a cool yeah. thing to be at. Very dumb, but that'd be a fun little... I like seeing the guys with their guard down. 
you brought yeah. up an interesting point. What's can we get cat out there on like a in a golf cart? Yeah. Uh yeah. Save save your legs, player. I don't know why you're you're walking unnecessarily. You've you've played the course before. You gotta loosen up a bit. I get it. And Famously won there. They're gonna play a little differently from you know, year to year, but uh Maybe just one practice. Maybe maybe this is the only practice round he's going to do. He may not even be playing 18. Yeah, you're, you might be right. Maybe he just walked to 16 and give did the water the, uh, thing. And... Give him the NFT Nick treatment if you can't get him a cart. You know, if we're, if we're not going to go that far at Augusta. See, I showed Dylan that video this morning. Like it's a good video. It's a good video. Here we go. Because walking is for haters only, apparently. <laughs> Which is weird because like most people, like unless you have a, you know, a disability, will walk. Right or almost uh, yeah, almost a hundred percent participation for able-bodied people to, you, to, to, that walk. They walk. Yeah. Can I hit another spot on this bingo card? Uh, or if you're mid NBA game and you're uh, mm. one of the stars of the Celtics and you've just dudeed in your own shorts. <laughs> He's talking Paul Pierce when he famously dudeed. <laughs> allegedly, mm. you remember that? It's the same. Yeah. It's the same carrying mechanism, like motion. It would be funny to to power rank the uh, sports doos of our time, because that's certainly one. He didn't actually do do though, right? What happened? Talk about the time that he was carried off, like screaming in pain. Yeah, he was in pain because everybody he, knew he do dude. He was screaming in pain, and then like ten minutes later, he emerged from the locker room like I'm I'm actually okay. And have you ever? Playing. Yeah, but have you ever slid into third and felt a little turd? Mm -hmm. No, never done that. You'd cry too if it happened to you. I've never pooped during a sporting event. Dude, I don't think I have either. I've puked. You're a baseball guy. No mm. offense. Y'all don't really go all out. It's, it's hockey. Probably pissed my it's pants. fairly leisurely. I've hockey pu puked a couple times. Okay. I definitely probably pissed my pants during a, uh, a game, if not a scrimmage. Maybe not like full blown tucked away and it just let it rip. But I think uh, we shared this with Mike uh, Golick Jr. We did. Mm -hmm. recently. Good poll. We talked about uh, football players trying to uh, urinate on the sideline and how lives have been made easier by blue pop-up tents. But uh, in the past, you had to just kind of snake it through your the strings of your right L's. Uh, and if you didn't get there quite in time, <laughs> you were just, you know, unraveling like a balloon, just splash action. It was bad. You can and you go back to practice. You could cover it up with a pants, pants Gatorade. I, I I don't 100%. understand why football players are always peeing their pants. I played baseball. Drink so much water. I played baseball so much growing up, and I've never had to like emergency run out of the dugout to find a restroom. Here we go. I know you drink a lot of water, but you're also <laughs> exerting a ton of energy. The bladder on this guy. I just I'm. Now that you think of it, I don't know that I've ever seen baseball players. Uh, I guess it I mean, happens in majors. Like in the big head back into the clubhouse. Yeah, the but clubhouse like, is right there. It's an easy getaway. Your generic like field out, outside of high school or whatever. I don't know that I've seen that scene too many times. Somebody exiting the, the little cage dugout area. I feel like that's always sacred territory. I've you never, see you see it in golf quite a bit. There's a famous John Rahm. Like, mm -hmm. They never talk about it on the broadcast. It's almost taboo, but like – You'll see Zyre Golf will be like, oh, John Rama took shit. He's got to make it through a half, like a, a half. You go to the locker room and you're, you know, do your do your business there. Mm -hmm. why, why are the why are the pants peeing in football? It's kind of alpha. You know what I mean? What's up with that? I mean, the the least clean the least clean sport here, baseball, is coming at football. Uh, the absolute sloppiest players on the face of the planet between their bubble gum and their uh, sunflower seeds. I'm I'm not hearing it from this uh, from this contingency. I'm just the, the bladder control on football players is just it, it leaves a lot to be desired. Is all I'm saying. I, I can I can empathize. With okay. That. You want to hear some odds? You want your faves? Yeah. What, what we got? Who do you think the fave is? Scotty Scheffler. KJ. Uh, That's not gonna be a serious answer. Uh, no 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 no. I had an answer, and it might have been Scheffler. It was somebody who won. Uh, yeah, it was Scheffler. Whatever. Give me Scheffler. Sorry. I, I looked this up and I was like, fuck. I'm going to nail this. But Four to one. Scotty Chef. Sheesh. That's Cray. That is Cray. Rory McIlroy, 10 to one. John Rahm, 12 to one. Xander Schauffele, 16 to one. Brooks Kepka, 18 to one. Hideki, 18 to one. 
Jordan Speed twenty to one. I he gets too much credit, dude. I look. I am a Jordan apologist. I'm just kind of out on him. He just his game has given me the ick. He just lost. Uh, was it where are they with this last week? Houston or San Antonio? Where was it? San Antonio. He lost by like sixteen strokes or something. It's a tune up, but yeah, it wasn't good. We, anytime, just some guy I've never heard of. Anytime. Uh, by the way, yeah, you have. We've talked about him. Who? Ate. How do you say the name? <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah, you know the guy whose name I know off the Ache? top of my head. Um. It was a sick finish. Anyway, anytime the highlight of your re- your weekend is the fact that you uh, had no other choice but to hit it into uh, hit it onto a roof into a gutter to get the drop, like that was your best best choice of action. It's just not good. I, I know he's won Masters before, but it's it's been a long time, and he hasn't really sniffed it in a while. Mm-hmm. Ba a Batia, sorry. You know him if you sell him. Ashke yeah. Batia, sorry. Akshe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I've never heard that name until this weekend. He's got a look. I'm He's got. Share, he wears the cool. Uh, yeah, I was about to say cool if, glasses. Okay. If we can get that to Randy, it's worth uh, because again, not to completely derail, but the um, the Valero Texas that uh, Akshay won is one that does the bit of. Hey, you won. Here's your trophy. And here, by the way, are some fucking cowboy boots. Oh, yeah. I like that. I meant to freaking send uh, that to Meme Town. Darn it. (laughs) Akshay rocking these boots at 113 pounds wet with hopefully what is a golf ball in his front pocket. Okay. Is quite a scene. I don't know, man. If you won a tournament and got to play the Masters for the first time, this is such a good photo. Oh, okay. I know this guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The skinny, the skinny lefty. Do you want to know his? You want his? Uh, his measurables. This is insane. You won't get guess. You're the you're the guy who knows the height. This guy is six two, one hundred thirty two pounds. Six one, one thirty. I was close. There's no one thirties. There's no way, right? Uh. <laughs> that picture doesn't that, even do the boots that is justice. Fucking, that is that is so skinny. For reference, I'm going to make it about me. I am five nine and a half, flirting with five ten on a good day. You're slender of build. I've lost weight since the shoulder things, so but that's okay. One fifty two, and okay. I'm I'm one thirty is just unfathomable. You have thirty pounds on this guy uh, in four fewer inches. Height wise, Randy, I'm worried about your computer right now. Just get out of here. Yeah, you got to yeah, just. I was trying to figure out what was going on because I was getting a little bit of like squirrel action. Yeah, the, the, the computer, the computer, speed, computer's bad. Light fuse, get away. Oh my god! Like I won't stick to that picture, but uh, when you have a chance, we'll we'll throw it up with the uh, we're gonna, post. We'll do it too. But much Akshay with the golf ball in this front pocket, uh, at 139 pounds, it, it has me interested in the man's odds for oh. sure. Hold on. Randy, Hold on, KJ. Producer Talking Weeks. tracking packages here. Producer Weeks rolling on. Randy just dropped the... Uh... Oh, my gosh, Randy. It's like I don't even know what you're doing over there. Oh, we, we, uh... <laughs> it's fine. The, the time, I bumped the TV and the timer fell off. Nothing nothing wrong. We're good. Let's go back to it. Do you guys have a, do you guys have a pick? John Rom. Oh, John Rom. Oh, he's really... Yeah, that's I a mean, great pick. The, I, don't, I mean, Scotty, I, I don't want to just... That's a chalk. Pick the overall fave. Give me, uh, a, give me a, a, a dark horse. Ooh, a dark horse. Let me throw. Uh, how about Ludwig Eberg? Ooh, he's been he's shout been out the stri- Tron. He's been striking it. He's full. Oh, you're right about that, my friend. Twenty five. No, what is? It? Yeah, twenty five to one. I'd sprinkle. Yeah, he's playing some good ball right now. Hey, this is me sprinkling. That's Dave sprinkling. He just did the thing. KJ, who you horny for? Who you liking? Give me no mullet, Cam Smith. April Fool's joke. He's got the mullet. Motherfucker. Fully was silly, silly Like, bitch. I read it and believed it, absorbed it, saw him. He's like, oh, whatever. He was bored with it. They, like, undersold the reason in the story I read, so I just went on about my life. Didn't even think of the date. <laughs> um, I like to... Okay, I'm between Willie Z and... and of course, you know your boy's going Vicky Hovland. Vicky Hov's thirty to one. That's where my money's going. Okay. I'm going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna settle on Victor. Well, that's your boy. That's my guy. Everybody knows that. 
But I think Willie Z, man. I love Willie Z. I do. Do we? I don't really know why. Like he does. If we if we use the same reasoning to analyze him versus Justin Thomas, they both have like their look. Both of their looks is like oh, Zelatoris is so much less punchable than Justin Thomas is for my money. He looks like a praying mantis, which is exactly what you want to look like to play golf. That's a great build to have. They're sneaky killers. I can't explain why I hate Justin Thomas so much, but no I one hate, can. But I hate Justin Thomas. He parted ways he, with bones. He has the look of somebody who's like inconvenienced at all times, and I think that's what it is. Like you generally want to have like a I give off chill vibes look, and I don't think Justin Thomas could do that without it making making it look like, you know. I'm dad on a beach vacation dad face. Like it always looks minorly inconvenienced. Man, that's a, um, that might be the best way I've heard it described. Inconvenienced. Zalatoris, 40 pounds on Akshay. 175 at 6'2". Oh, that's. Zalatoris is not 6'2". What in the 6'2", world? 6'2", 175. There's no way that. I, what? Uh, he, I thought he was a tiny lad. Not to brag, but I may have played 28 inch two groups behind him. 28 inch. That's too thin. What are you? You're 32. <laughs> 32. Randy, what are you? I don't even want to know. I am 5'10, 180. What's that ass doing, Nobody though? Said, yeah. How much give us the here and Figure it out. Y'all need to calm down. Sorry, Eclipse Day. Yeah, that's fair. People are commending me for uh, having the cojones. Although surgically uh, altered, to uh, take a picture in shorts next to Randy, as I did on the circling back Instagram. You know what? Fine. Yeah, I get it. The guy's got he's got bigger leg bones, bigger leg mass. Arguable, you know the the asses are comparable, is what people are saying. But quads are bigger, calves are bigger. Fine. But I did it. I'm not. I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about the content we're creating. So shout out to Dave. There's moments like that where you really need Micah's cover fire of everyone just being like, why the fuck's this guy on his tippy toes? Yeah, that's a great point. And then point. it takes the rest of the comparison out of the photo. <laughs> I was thinking about some regrettable things from touching base days. If, you're, if you just listen to this podcast, uh, we used to do a show, not us three, but Dylan, Will, and I, uh, called Touching Base at a former employer. That's when Dylan was the king of frat back in that day. Still am. Still is. He had croquis on his eclipse glasses. Um, mm -hmm. I once, I was accused of standing on tippy toes once in a photo. And I remember like, just, I remember just fighting it just tooth and nail. Like, no, I wasn't. <laughs> and I, I don't think I was, but the fact that I just was like, so like adamant that I wasn't looking back, I was like, just fuck it. Don't, that's so stupid to be mad about. Like, what are you doing? I don't know why. That's the stuff I think about at night before I go to bed. It's a really healthy life I lead. It's Okay. That's Micah's signature move, by the way. I know. That's that's what brought it up. Micah was calling me out. And then come to – Micah still does it, by the way, in just photos with – like not even content people. He'll be at like uh, his neighbor's kid's like second birthday party, and you'll see Micah – like his wife tag him in a photo, and he's on tippy toes. Like no payoff on the bit outside of his household in his neighborhood, but he does it anyway. <laughs> he's too He's too committed to the bit. It's unbelievable. It's one of my favorite things. Randy, who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Jordan Spieth. Cool. Any reason? Uh, cause I, I, I know his name. Did you see, um, go ahead, Dylan. You got something? No. I heard you taking a breath. No, you I was, was going to say, like, we were just talking about how he's playing poor golf and then he's going to pick him. That's okay. Well, Randy's do different. Thing. Do your thing, Randy. Randy's different. You never know. He's bouncing back. You might find his game. Miraculously this it's, week. it's a, you know, he's played well out All there. Right, I'll take a long shot. Sky Scheffler. Okay, yeah, okay. we say he's four to one. Oh, that's okay. good. A couple longhorns there. I like it. Um, did you quick see? Quick question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Master schedule real quick. You mentioned the whole skip it on 16th. That's today, Monday. I know the par three contest with families. Is that also today? Uh, that's maybe, I don't know, whenever that comes up. I want to say that's Wednesday. I think that's a Wednesday play. I, I think. So they stretch this whole, I'm again, this may be a very dumb question. I didn't realize it was like, yes, it's master's week. I get that. I didn't realize like people are already arrived and doing shit on Monday. Oh, I yeah. thought like they roll in Wednesday was like the first thing. So yeah, it's pretty standard for all these tournaments me. is that people usually show up uh, Monday 
get settled in, go hit the range and, and practice round or two. Yeah. If you're a more cerebral player and you're already you're already in, you don't have to go win in San Antonio to qualify or something. You'll go and maybe soak up the vibes, Jim Nance style. Maybe go walk the fairways barefoot, have a glass, <laughs> as he does. Um, which, by the way, I wonder when he got there, because as you know, Ooh, he's not he doing to the go straight from uh, yeah, Phoenix. He's not doing the Final Four, so he could have been out there like two weeks ago. Is that what he does? He he walks it barefoot with with wine. It's something like that. That's I can't he always say. like oversells that he's like leaving wherever the Final Four is, and then. The next tweet or mention from him is him and like a bottle of the calling out on the fairway. I'll say it on the green. That's a bit that I, while I do hate, I also love it. It's so perfectly him. And Which bit? Just him. His doesn't do it anymore because he's not doing the final four, but his like um, Augusta reads, ad reads, and, and, you know, and then his like see at the Masters, all that, like the way yeah. he, the way he transitions from oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Four. That's good. That's good. And the way he soaks up the Augusta National and talks about it like he's, you know, walking the fields of Gettysburg a hundred years later or something. Yeah. Uh a quick a quick little tidbit on the <laughs> fairways true. there, just because I've been there and it's it's pretty wild. When you so you enter you enter through like the the pro shop and the concession area when you walk into the masters, and then you enter like the grounds, right? And you straight ahead is Number one, T box fairway, kind of a, I want to say 100, 150 yards away from like the concession area. Mm -hmm. And you walk out there and you're on the turf and it's, it's like, it's fake. You have to, like, the grass is so pristine, like, and there's so much foot traffic there. It's like, there's no way this is actually real grass. You don't know it's real until you, like, actually get your hand down and touch it. It's so unbelievably flawless that it it feels like it's just astroturf but it's not it's unbelievable it's fucking wild i'm telling you it's like a surreal experience i'm sorry i gotta get that out there it's 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 like nothing else man i respect it i look forward to hearing about it from will you'll get out there one day davy this is a no this is good because i did not know you walked through the pro shop you don't walk through the pro Clubhouse. shop you walk through um Ish. It's all it's all right there. Like it's it's open air. Like the con, there's a concession area, and there are picnic tables, and then you can walk into the pro shop where you you know the merch store is all right there. It's massive, um, but you don't have to walk through it to get out there. But there's like a little passageway that goes to like this little uh, I don't know what you call it open air, whatever. It's fucking wild. Do you think Will's gonna shed a tear when he reaches totality? Walks through there, just that first moment totality when he gets out there and see like when he re you know he's like well, he knows he's there yeah yeah yeah. uh i think you are more likely to shed a tear than will is you're a sports crier yeah i don't think i would cry at augusta nash i didn't cry i didn't get emotional i was just like this doesn't feel like a real place when i first got out there i was by myself because i lost the person i was with and there's no phone so i can't you can't call me hey where are you well, so i i walked the, for the first like three hours i walked by myself I started on that's cool i started on 10 that long par four that goes that's really steep downhill yeah i was like oh my god this is like down the face of a mountain it was so crazy then i just walked uh 10 11 i walked all the way to aiming corner and then back up toward the clubhouse area see i probably would cry because i my you know my great uncle tragically passed at one of the ponds out there <laughs> what, oh really what happened did he, he's just a troubled did, did man he get hit by a golf ball or something what happened? no 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 he got a haircut <laughs> he got a haircut he got a haircut and then he got another haircut did you say your uncle <clears throat> or your grand who was it my great uncle okay yeah we don't Old talk cliff about really loved the pot just <laughs> <laughs> no one had somebody lost money on me being the first to bring that up i had to i was gonna i, I kind of cut KJ. physically restraining myself hoping that we would transition and i would say you know what one year without so he, he wanted to die with a fresh oh. cut what's with the haircut it's, dude it's, he's getting a fit off okay he, pr <laughs> he was probably wearing his jacket was he like totally dressed out and everything i feel like he was but if he was not wearing the green jacket i hate to say it that was a miss absolutely Right, you got to go out in that. You can't, yeah. You can't exactly pass that down to family members after you off yourself in it, though, can you? Uh, probably, yeah. had, probably had blood on it and shit. And 
if I'm the if I'm like the next of kin, I'm kind of like. Ah, what kind of blicky did he use? Give me the jacket. It was probably a musket. It was a musket. Um, <laughs> it was a musket that his uh, great great granddaddy. It was, uh, a, it was piece probably not racist at all. But might have been a bootlegger. It could have been a bootlegger. His great great granddaddy had like won it in a duel after he took it off of another man. This song's about my great grandpappy who offed himself next to Axe Pawn. <laughs> Shout out Cliff. Actually, no shout out. That yeah, say that again. Shout out. Out. No, not a good guy. The worst guy. If, if you if y'all know the story, victim of, of his talk. What's his last name? Uh, Bar. What's his last name? Notes. Old Cliff. Clifford. Anyway, Cliff Daddy. very big very, red dog. Very racist. Cliff Roberts, I think. Very racist uh, man who said. Uh, as long as I'm alive, the caddies will always be black at the Masters or like at Augusta National period or something like that. And no one you're, no one can play unless they're a white man or some shit like that. Yeah. Like it's, it's pretty, not, pretty bad shit. To be fair, uh, no relation. Yeah. Dave was joking about it being his great uncle. But the guy, the guy sucked. Oh. Certified. Sucked. <laughs> the no, thing is, it, we were like joking as if uh, he held these strong, like deep feelings back in the uh, – in the teens, maybe the twenties. Uh, no, while Clifford Roberts was born in 1894, he decided to go on that fateful walk uh, in September of 1977. So you could have just said your uncle, and uh, we would have been safe. That's a great point. <laughs> uh, 1977 is when he killed himself. Does anybody yeah. miss when Dylan used to say, like, sucks. emphatically, he sucks? Like a sucks. There it is. Sucks. He used to say that a lot. You did? Yeah. You bring that back. Okay, now maybe I will. I miss stupid dick. The chair from 31 to 76. It's too long. Stupid dick. There's an article by The Guardian that says, uh, the tragic end of Clifford Roberts, the man who got the masters going. That may be giving the guy a little bit too much of a uh, a proper send-off there. Mm. The guy's certified sucked. Well, anyway. Maybe it was just CTE or Masters co-founder. I don't think it was CTE. A spotty history, the Masters. We don't have to read. Oh, okay. I thought you were about to read the article. Spotty history. Sounded like an intro. <laughs> Not great. We do this every year. Not a great history. Look, you have to look forward or look backward to look forward. Move on. Progress. I don't know. That's a shitty quote that I just made. I don't, don't quote me on that. Delete that, Randy. You know, they've streamlined things since. Now they got like one entrance that goes through the facility. Not like alternate entrances that likely... Would have been for other patrons. Just saying. Okay. I'm changing my uh, my pick to Adam Schenk. He's a Purdue grad. It's first time being at the Masters. Oh, I'm sure that'll I'm pay sure off. He's going to do really oh, okay. well. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, <laughs> I have I was a like hope and Adam Schenk is like who succeeded Cliff Roberts or no, something no. like. Just first time <laughs> Masters appearance, Purdue grad. Oh, first time Purdue grad. Yeah, I think you could pencil him in. He's winning it all. Um, I have a note here that John Rom, uh, famously on the live tour now, is saying like kind of, hey, we kind of need to get the live tour to 72 holes. We want to like get world golf points, make it more legit. I think I changed the name of the tour. Of course, live is Roman numeral 54. What's Roman numeral 72? Hard to say. You can't look that up either. Live plus two. Live plus uh, 18. 18. Yeah. LXX. Ooh, that I, get. I. Yeah. I, I think the best thing Liv can do right now is add eight, 18 holes and also get rid of Greg Norman. Yeah. Who um, came out this week and said, uh, Taylor, what did he say about Gooch? The Gooch, the ever controversial Taylor Gooch said that he's like the best iron player he's seen in the last 20 years. I guess so. Just a number of players who have played their irons better. You know, given their success in the game of golf. Sure. Taylor Golf, fine player. It's, it's like a, there's been other players in the last 20 years. He's a I shut, could think of some. He's a shut his trap, though. A number of them on the live tour, famously. Um, but that's it. Anything else from the from the Masters Week? Have you guys put the app in your uh, thumb zone? I haven't done that yet, Dave. Trick question. It should already be there. Wow. Year round? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I know KJ has. Uh, it's, you know, it's in the cloud. Um, 
I do want to do more live talk here in a couple weeks. Uh, wholeheartedly agree with the sentiment uh, you shared, but we don't have to go along on that today. Yeah. One thing you got to be aware of if you're going to the Masters the first time, Augusta National, is what kind of shape you're in. Because it's very hilly out there. More hilly than it looks on TV, famously, right? Oh, yeah. You got to have a fit bod. That's true. Mm -hmm. Good point, Dave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness journey, FitBod will push you to make progress. Dylan, they pushed you to make some progress, and look at you now. You're damn right, Dave. You're got, looking good. Got your boy fit. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. But better. It's cheaper. You can work out anywhere, with or without equipment, and it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. When Dylan went to the Masters, he just he didn't even bring weights. He just did a FitBod bodyweight workout. Then he got jacked, and look at him. That's where it started. Looking Augusta. great. Yeah. You like planning it? You like confusing your muscle fibers? I know you do. I, I do, yeah. Uh, it, it's a fantastic app uh, for whichever your desired results are. We'll also tailor your workouts for your workout environment, mm -hmm. whether that be a gym with all the equipment available to you or at home using body weight or perhaps bands. Yep. It's got it all. It's, it's got it all. It'll set you up. And if uh, you're doing a new movement, they've got over 1,000 demonstration videos. And it's also fine-tuned by experienced certified personal trainers to bring best practices and exercise science to you. Also, love this, FitBot tracks your muscle recovery so you can avoid burnout and keep up your momentum. It adapts as you improve, so each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash bang. That's fitbo dot M-E slash bang. Uh, show note here should have led with this. We need reviews. We would like it. We want five-star reviews on this show. If you've never reviewed this show, go on to Spotify or Apple, go to both subscribe on both platies, hit us with a five-star review. And maybe, um, if we see some good ones, we'll, maybe we'll read them. I'll let Rit Dylan read them as Christopher Walken. If there's a good one. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, where do you guys want to go next? I guess we should talk college basketball. Because that's the thing right now. Oh, whatever. Um, were you guys bummed we'll wrap about up last night or talk tonight? Let's talk last night. Did y'all watch? I did. Um, I had it on. I was not sat down, strapped in, strapped on, ready to watch like the entire game start to finish. Uh, but I had it going like three straight hours or so. Couple quick highlights. Um the production quality of the women's basketball game, like in general, I mean, I've seen a few tweets talking about um, ESPN's like panel they put on before and after we rave every single year about the NBA on TV, NBA on TNT crew, Shaq, um, Charles, that whole crew. They've been together for decades. Like that's impossible to recreate. We get to the fall and we talk a little about college game day and how it kind of lacks like all these things. There's very little like tradition to like the panel that the ESPN put together for the women's tournament and they knocked it out of the park. Like I'm a big L Duncan fan. Uh, she thinks she does a great job, like on whatever sports center, you know, I do see her on, but they put together a full panel and it concluded Aaliyah Boston, who was, um, uh, number one draft pick out of South Carolina last year when they lost to Iowa. And I thought she was going to be kind of, you know, I don't know, like a Homer panelist. They did quality work start to bottom that was not too heavy handed in any like basics. Like, Oh my gosh, look at Caitlin Clark or Oh my gosh, just look at Don Stanley. Like they, they gave you an analysis. They gave you like context for the game. That was great. Quickly on like the result, big fan of uh, Caitlin Clark. Um, I don't know. Getting the shout out from Don Stanley. Like that was the highlight of my day after the fact. Yeah. Um, also got some love from LeBron on uh, mm -hmm. the Twitter. I uh, did not realize the extent of the haters that she had. Not hater. They're, they're obviously are Caitlin Clark haters, but um, people dismissing her a little bit from um, I don't know what it'll be at the next level, what she's done for the game. I haven't followed it that closely, uh, but it's I don't really know outside of her maybe 
complaining a little bit, which she kind of gets lumped in with like the Luca complaining to the refs or reactions. I feel like people are just looking for things to rip on her for. And she's objectively fun to watch. The easy comp is like Curry, um, Steph Curry. And it's like, yeah, that's exactly right. And who is more fun to watch than him and from 2015 to you know 2021? Very few people. Um, and I said last night, the game was at two yesterday. Don't really love the day mm-hmm. championship game. It was a weird yeah. time. I was flipping, I was flipping channels and I realized it was on in the middle of the day. I was, it was a little odd for me. Yeah. Sunday afternoon. Um, I did watch some of it though. I watched, I tuned in fourth quarter. So the game was pretty much in hand already. Uh, yeah. I would like to, I would like to have seen Caitlin Clark win a, a championship. Uh, South Carolina, it, that's a, a juggernaut, unfortunately for her. Um, yeah, she's getting she's getting some criticism, uh, saying like it, her, you know, her status as the goat is is you know she she got you got to have a natty, you got to have a natty to to really be up there. So I I don't know, man. She she did so much for call for women's basketball. I, I've never been this interested in it before. I think I speak for a lot of people. It's it's like a popular sport now, bro. She's not my goat, bro. She's got no rings. She's got no rings. How many does Brittany have? Multiple. Or one. I don't know. I didn't follow her because I was selling weapons. Better line. Wait, can, can we talk? I don't know who else did she marry? Okay. Can we talk Kelsey Plum for a sec? I just sent it to Randy. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> By the way, KKP I've fan. never seen so much commentary about a six-second video in my life. She can't even eat pop. Why are people... <laughs> why? Uh... Yeah, she was getting absolutely destroyed for this video. She's just eating. She like the camera's in her face. She's eating, they got a big tub of popcorn in front of her, and she she. <laughs> I don't get it. I, 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 it KJ, I'm gonna let you speak on this. I know you've got takes. Um, Kelsey Plum, recent wife of uh, Darren Waller, tight end, uh, formerly mm-hmm. of the Raiders. Raiders? Don't know where he is now. He's somewhere yeah. else. New York, I think. Giants. Um, I, I don't like. She's got a little bit of the Joker mouth situation going, she does. like with her look. So I don't know if it's like just her genuine look that caught people off guard, but Joker mouth. I don't know. <laughs> she does. Uh, Nick, Nicholson look, yeah, Joker. It, it's the way yes, she looks 100%. away to her her friend as she takes a bite and she like looks at her like, look how funny I'm being. I'm just being so quirky and cute. Uh, and it, it didn't land for a lot of people. Yeah. What she was. It, someone just said white woman humor. I'm like, yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's something about her, though. I, I've got no complaints over here. Something about her. Other than that she would tower over me. Remember the video of her throwing the T-shirt into the crowd uh, from a few years back? And uh, she, yeah. She threw it like, she, like 80 yards. <laughs> it was an absolute launch. Oh, my God. It Athlete. Was, yeah. Just pure athlete. Wow. Good for her. Hey, you know what? I'm a Kelsey Plum fan. How about that? I'll go against against the grain here. I like her. I say let women eat popcorn on camera. However they Choose. see fit. And she see fit as well. Yes. Okay. Um, Randy, how are we feeling? Uh, the Every second, the inch is closer and more nervous I get. I've been trying to just put it out of my, my – I was focusing on the eclipse today, but now – yeah, it's, uh, it's getting close. It's getting close. Going to a Purdue bar tonight to go watch it, and just every single turnover, every missed shot, I'm just gonna go. I think Hold that on. like that's the game. Hold on. Yes, on this say, KJ. I know where this is going. Can we take guesses for which bar in Austin might be the Purdue bar? Ooh, I don't think you've ever heard like of it. Cheddar's Bat ba- Bat Bar. I don't know. No, nah, it's called a trifecta. What else would qualify? It's called a trifecta. It's like a whiskey bar. All that, but I think it's gonna. Oh, okay. They have like extra space too and stuff. So I think that's where we're gonna go. It's just the second floor, of Maggie Mays. Yeah. Okay. I, I love Maggie Mays back in the day. <laughs> I don't know. I've been there a while. I don't think it's a bar anymore, is it? No, it's it's back open. I it was no, closed no during idea. COVID for a while, but that's like the, the stairwell of Shakespeare. So I'm just gonna name all the dirty six places I can think of. These are just bars that people are like, oh yeah, real world Austin. Uh, 25 years ago, I remember <laughs> they went there, and didn't that guy get in a fight and whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I've, I'm probably the only person on this show who picked Purdue before the tournament, at least had the, the guts to Randy was real tepid about it. 
I'm a little worried. This UConn team, come to find out. They're good. Pretty good. Pretty good team. Guards, the guards are going to be a problem. How many times is Edie going to get stripped tonight when he's in the post? God, he's got a – dude, we talked about <laughs> For some reason, I can't get past that. That is my one no, – there's two things that bother me when your center can't catch a pass. I got, got so got frustrated brick watching hands. it. When you got brick hands on a pass, and then also when you get it, you do catch it and you bring it down low, and you just oh, – and you get stripped. Some guy half your size just – just takes it from you. Yeah. That shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. And then you're just like, you're so big, you're bending down trying to get it, and it's over by the If that I'm point. his coach, I'm like, hey, you're not allowed to dribble, buddy. You get the ball and you're holding it up. You're either shooting or passing. That's do the not, Brian Boddicker rule. Do not dribble. Uh when, I'm a, your, your ass is gonna be on the bench. When Boddicker was at Texas, <laughs> Rick Barnes did not allow him to dribble. That was like the Thing that everybody heard. I don't know. He like just also was sneaky, uh, a good perimeter shooter. Anyway, I'm sure everybody out there is familiar with uh, former uh, McDonald's All American and Duncan Bill Panther great uh, Brian Boddicker. Was on a good Texas team though. Uh, I don't know why the name like immediately sounded familiar, and then uh, you explaining, I'm like, why the hell was this stuck in my brain? Like, why did I keep that name with me? But that explains why. Yeah, Duncan Bill and Texas. Um, Donovan Klingon. Uh, I am excited to see him and Zach Eady square off 7-2 out of UConn. Um, from Bristol, Connecticut. Like, that's just kind of insane to me. It's not even like, oh, just kind of stumbled in and, you know, recruited to UConn to be their number one player. Um, grew up there, hometown, seven foot two, 280. So um, it's going to be interesting. It was strange as shit seeing uh, Shaq congratulate Zach Eady after the game the other day. I don't know if you saw that picture. He and Shaq just look like normal sized human beings next to each other, which is freaky as hell. Yeah, to see. That's, that's really weird. No, I, I thought you were going to bring up the video of uh, Zach Eady getting congratulated um, as he walked into a room with a young lady, <laughs> in theory. Uh, I only know of his Snapchat, but uh, I may have missed some videos. It's just him. The best tweet, one of the best tweets of the la of last week. What was it, Randy? It was now that could be anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly, clearly something yeah, I'll going on. I'll do my searching. There. Um, my guy DJ Burns, NC State. Um, rough Great outing, fellow. Rough outing. Um, like eight points, one board, two ball. I, some cr crazy low number of rebounds. Um. Yeah, that was tough. That's that wasn't uh, the game that I, I so, thought we were going to get. That's what happens when you go up against Edie. <sighs> oh, wow. We'll cocky see. Purdue guy. No, no, I'm not cocky at all. There's nothing about Purdue that I ever can be cocky about. Well, I, you're in the natty. Yeah, well, uh -huh. well we got to win. We got to win one. We okay. got to win, gotta win one. Got to win one. I'm feeling good, man. It's going to be tough. It's going to be, gonna be yeah. stressful. Oh, yeah. What but, a two-week run Randy has had. We got the Eclipse. Got Cheesecake Factory. Got Edie making a run. He turned 30. Yeah, 30. He's on a bender. I'm now seeing photos from this video. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> um, did y'all have any issue with the foul at the end of the uh, game the other night? Thank you. I got some thoughts on it. Go ahead. Uh, it was the correct call. Mm -hmm. I don't understand... Why people continue to say, oh, well, at that point in the game, you can't call that. Why not? Why, why do rules go out the window during crucial moments in games? You can't, like, why should you be allowed to break the rule just because, oh, the time is running down and it's a two-point game? I, I, I don't understand that mentality that so many people seem to share. It is a classic case of everyone, unless you are on the team that is winning, everyone wants that game to come down to the last shot. They want a, a crazy epic ending. Because unless I'm missing something like egregious, there hasn't been, on either tournament, there hasn't been a ton of like crazy moments, right? Um, You think you're going to get it there, and then you get a whistle. You want it to happen. I, I, want, I wanted that to happen, Everybody, too. and that's why your initial reaction is, oh, bullshit, how do you call it there? If that was my initial reaction. And then you see it in slow-mo, and you're like, okay. Well, yeah, she took a full step into this person to, to set that pick. Yeah. It was clearly a foul. You don't, you shouldn't let it go just because you want to see an exciting finish to a game. You can't, you shouldn't be allowed to foul. You shouldn't be allowed to travel. You know, I mean, it, I just, I don't understand it. It was a foul. And it was, I cold. wonder, how, I wonder how much of it is like, um, 
the rooting against Caitlin Clark is probably an element of it. Like those people were rooting actively for a different outcome. So you get that part of it. Um, and maybe not consciously, not like just haters out there, but the people who were like hoping for Paige um, Beckers, which I butchered her name the other day. Um, you either have that contingent or you have a situation where like in every other aspect of life, you get people rooting for that approach to how you handle rules. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm about to graduate here in a week. Can you let this slide? Like, Hey, like whatever it is, like you're at the end of whatever obligation you have and you hope for like forgiveness about some situation. I'm not trying to be too meta about it, but like, I think we apply that same logic in a lot of other aspects. And then when you go to sports, I think people have that same mentality. Like, no, 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 no. Just let the outcome be a coming out. Like, you know, uh, and they say like handle it on the field, handle on the court because it seems like more honest. But to your point, Dylan, like it's not like you play the entire game, quote unquote, being more honest by like following these like agreed upon rules. You fucked up. It's unfortunate, but you fucked up. Yeah. And I would be, I'd be lying if I said I'd watch that entire game with the same intensity I watched like the last five minutes. But a lot of it depends on like, how has the game been called? Like, have they been letting yep. them, letting that stuff slide? And they just happen to call that in the, in the end of the game. Like, I don't know. But yeah, that was, I think people knee jerk reactions. That's why you should think before you tweet. And it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Most people said it was a bad call and then they re- reviewed it. And they're like, eh, yeah. Whatever. Twitter did save like the refs or like the sentiment because quickly you ended up getting angles you didn't get on live television or at least immediately on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else on college basketball? Oh, of course there is. Oh. Kentucky losing their coach to Arkansas because Arkansas lost their coach to USC because USC lost their coach to SMU. <laughs> that is a, a funny, funny chain of events. Um that's a tweet from Roger Sherman. Um, yeah, Calipari, Arkansas. Interesting. Mind blown. Like, maybe it's the timing of it. I had this happen immediately after the season ended for Kentucky, and there were rumblings about it. Maybe that's what it is. Like, we just don't get news of this magnitude in this fashion. Like, out of the blue – at the end of a cycle of like basketball being in the main, like purview for college basketball being like the main spotlight. So that was just strange. And I get why it happened in this, in this sequence, but like Kentucky choked like the weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it just makes you wonder like, was he considering committing elsewhere up until this moment or was it truly once Musselman put his shirt back on and took his shit to USC, that's when the calls started happening. And if so, the bags of fuck you money had to be that like massive in my mind to, to like make the tides turn this quick. Arkansas to USC, is that considered in basketball world? Is that considered an upgrade? It seems pretty SEC to Big Ten, like in current NIL deal like days, like maybe. I don't think USC throws around NIL money. I mean, I have no frame of reference, to be honest with you. I just assume, like, you have more cachet with the program. It's not like you're taking a step down. But Musselman, just like Calipari, I think, had kind of hit that plateau of, like, what he was going to get done at Arkansas. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't we have a bunch of, like, unfounded reports of just absolute chaos going on between, like, the student body and the basketball roster of just a bunch of rumor mill bullshit with that team? So, like. You can't really fault somebody for like wanting to get away from that. I don't even want to bring like air to it because some of it was unnecessary. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like player I, relationship type situation. I completely forgot about that, and it kind of went away. That was like a forty-eight hour mm-hmm. Twitter thing. But no, and and I I completely get why Calipari would do it because the people were calling for his ass like immediately. It's like rather than let's say he comes back. He's a lame duck, probably. Go get the bag, the Tyson Foods, uh, Jerry Jones bag, who were apparently both very involved in this, allegedly. Um, go to Arkansas. Arkansas is nice. If you've picked the right spot. He's not Rick, but he's not Rick Patino, but like having Bobby Petrino at Arkansas and having Jim Calipari there, like this is having Ed O and Kim Mulkey. 
on your same like athletic staff. Like you've got two fucking rock stars of press conferences where your, your school's going to be in the news eight months a year now, like shouts to them. Yeah. And then I guess the rumor mill, uh, Billy Donovan, does he want to jump back in, in the game, go to Kentucky, Scott Drew, Orlando or, uh, Billy Donovan. Is he not in Chicago? Let me check. He might be. Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah, that's honestly get get out of there. That's a bad deal. Um, so I don't know. Leave Scott Drew out of this. We already uh, Baylor already dodged the uh, the Louisville bullet. Don't want to deal with the uh, Kentucky play here, but that wouldn't shock me. That's a better job than than Louisville, in my opinion. Um, all right. Well, what do you guys want to do? You want to talk Dewey's or baseball? Let's get the Devondre Sweat shit out of the way. What's going on there, Devondre Sweat? Uh, former Texas defensive tackle, uh, Outland Trophy winner, was popped for a D dub on Sunday afternoon yesterday, <sighs> a couple weeks before the draft. Mm. Timing could not be worse. Uh, just uh, come on, man. That's all I got to say. Is, come on, man. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, hopefully, slip into the. Uh... Late second. He had it. Boys. I think he was projected second. Uh, was he really? Already. So he he had to answer questions at the combine from, you know, he did team interviews. He had a a little bit of the uh, party boy label to him. And he, and he like, by his own admission, like his first few years at Texas, like he, he would party. Uh, got his shit together and obviously had an excellent final season at Texas. And played his ass off, and he put himself in a great position to get drafted really high. He's going to slide a little bit, I think, because he's like I said, he already had that that label to him. So, just stupid, man. What are you doing? Get an Uber. What are you doing? Yeah, you really do hate to see it. It's really, it's really dumb. By all account, a good kid. Just a dumb, dumb mistake, man. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. I mean, he's he's gonna be fine. He's gonna get drafted, probably third round or something. He's gonna, whatever. But he, he probably cost himself some money there. Probably a lot of it. Yeah. Is there any other uh, bag fumbling that we've seen this this go around? Because I haven't really seen much. I don't think so. Not that I've heard of. And honestly, this this with everything else going on, this was the time to do it. Like as far as news cycle. Yeah. You yeah, got no what, uh, masters eclipse. You're you're in a little bit of a lull. No, you're not Laramie. a quarterback. Like, yeah, he'll be okay as far as like draft stock. I think he'll be all right. That, but it's certainly one of those where it puts you on like yellow card with whatever team you go to. Yeah, maybe the Jags. Um, if we're gonna do Ocean Avenue talk, um, <laughs> Dak famously had a Dewey. Slip to the did he, did he slip to the fourth round? Where was Dak even projected? Uh, second until he got his butt whooped. Okay, that was to ask me, but that was unnecessary. He got jumped. That wasn't even fair. Come uh, on. His butt, I think his, his are always whooped. projected like <laughs> you, my dad. I think he was proje- <laughs> projected third. I don't know how much that impacted it. Um, I think a big part of what impacted Dak stock was like Dan Mullen. I don't know how much cachet he had with like pro style quarterbacks were still sought after at that point. We hadn't had Patrick Mahomes show people that you were going to have like a successful pro like pro career out of a spread offense. And he'd run a lot of shotgun dominant offense in college. Yeah. And uh, the Broncos taking Paxton Lynch uh, really helped. Because famously, that's who Jerry, that's who they wanted. Paxton played where again? I don't, it's it's not worth it, but I don't know why I'm struggling to remember where the hell he was coming out of. Uh, famously, Paxton Lynch played in college. Memphis. Memphis. Yes. Oh, uh, Memphis. I should have recalled. Yes. There you Memphis. go. Okay. Anyhow, uh, we'll do uh, more base. San Antonio. I didn't know that. Interesting. We'll do baseball next week. Uh, chances are your favorite pitchers hurt and out for the season. <laughs> we're, we're Dylan and I were talking about it. Like, there's a video that surfaced of uh, who was it? Tyler Glasnow. Tyler Glasnow is now on the Dodgers, but back when he was with the Rays, kind of. Killian. I'll let you you sum it up. Killian Murphy look alike. Yeah. So, according to Tyler Glasnow, he's saying that 
since the since Major League Baseball started checking pitchers for sticky stuff, like after every half inning, basically, uh, it has caused him to grip the ball differently because he says everyone pretty much has something on their hands. He said he uses a combination of, I think he said sunscreen and rosin. Mm -hmm. And it just gives you a little something to get a little bit more grip on the ball. But when you can't use anything, it causes him to basically grip the ball tighter. Because you want to hold it like you hold an egg, like very like gently in your hands. But he says that he has to grip it firmly, and it just stresses all the muscles throughout your entire forearm and into your elbow. And he said the next day after he did that, like went cold turkey for the first time without any kind of sticky residue, he said his arm hurt in places it had never hurt previously to that, which is pretty interesting to think about. Yeah. I guess the, the theory that everybody's running with now is pitch clock. Um, you've had in a 48 hour period, you had Yuri Perez, Shane Bieber and Spencer Strider all go down UCL, Tommy John. Yeah. The pitch clock might have something to do with it, which sucks. Cause the pitch count, the pitch clock rules. It's been the best. It's been the best thing for watching baseball it's, of all time. It's so nice. It's so exciting watching baseball. Now it moves so fast. And if you're watching it on YouTube TV and you're behind at 15, 15 second jump button. Yeah. It's huge. It's very nice. Yeah. So yeah, so I don't the, know. Um, I don't know what's going on. That may point to um, why Glass now kind of went the angle that he did with that comment and why it stuck out. Stuck out because as as you mentioned, the entire players' association said p- pitch clock is the problem. Garrett Cole, manager for the Yankees, disheartened by the response because the response from the MLB to the players because they basically are like, "It ain't going anywhere." Because as we just said, as viewers and fans, we fucking love it. Um, I do wonder if that compromise is, Hey, can we fucking cool it with like what the pitchers are able to do to like, not necessarily regain an advantage, but if in fact it does help them control their throws a little bit better, which might, you know, could be slant as an advantage could be slant as just player protection. Uh, maybe that's a give. Uh, so I, I would like to see something done. Nobody here wants to see fucking four to two baseball games over and over and over. But I again, nobody wants to see zero ace pitchers. Yeah. And famously, uh, Jacob deGrom uh, scheduled to come back this year from his second Tommy John's, which is crazy to think about because I don't, I don't know the intricacies of Tommy John surgery, but it sounds – it's brutal. Anything that has like that kind of a recovery, it sounds awful. Do that twice. Yikes. All right, let's run it back. Run it back. The segment during which we talk about what we already talked about. Whole squad got eclipse fever. KJ poo pooed the eclipse, however. Hmm. The guy who won in San Antonio is a very tiny lad. Dylan unjustifiably hates Justin Thomas. Micah is too committed to the tippy toe bit. Dave's great uncle tragically passed by Ike's Pond after getting a haircut. We like Kelsey Plum. And finally, Zach Eady can't stop getting stripped in the paint. That concludes Run It Back. There it is. Good stuff, guys. Best of luck to those uh, Boilermakers. I will be out next week, but I will see you two gentlemen with your Postmasters takes. Hey, hey KJ. Hail Purdue. Bye. Bye. I want my chips Bye. with a dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. So bring them dips.